Hey everyone, Caddy here, and something tells me I'll make some enemies from this video. What's funny as well is that it won't be for the reasons you may be thinking. In this climate of everyone sucking this game's dick and 10 out of 10s absolutely everywhere from every damn website and newspaper, did I think the complete opposite on this game? No, I actually liked the new God of War, but I far from fucking loved it, and I have to say, as a fan of the series, I couldn't help but feel majorly disappointed. And sometimes that can land you in more shit on the YouTube review space than just outright hating or loving a game, no joke. No matter what I say in this video, a good few people down in those comments won't give a shit and just judge the entirety of my review abilities on a number out of 10 that isn't quite as high as they would like. Now don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to build this video up to stir controversy for the sake of it, or just hate this game because it's different from the other games which I'm a big fan of. Honestly, I'm not that pathetic. You came here for my opinions on my video, and if you can't handle the fact that I just liked God of War 2018 instead of absolutely loving its guts, I feel kinda sorry for you. Try enjoying some things without needing to agree with other people, life is nicer like that. And if you're gonna jump at my throat and say I'm just trying to be different because I don't follow the hype, well, for just two quick examples, I agreed with the hype of A Quiet Place and agreed with the hype of The Last of Us. I just know what I like and what I don't, and I'm not influenced by tabloid hype in any single way. Waffle aside though, yes, the new God of War, which I'm just gonna call God of War 4 now, I thought was alright. Not perfect, not amazing, not even that good, but just good. And here's why, get ready. Spoilers are right, okay nice. Let's just get this out of the way before anything else because it's the first thing your eyes and ears are exposed to. This is a totally beautiful game with an absolutely gorgeous soundtrack and fantastic sound design. I mean God of War has always been known for pushing the visual capabilities of the systems they appear on and here is no exception. And even better, on PS4 Pro, playing the game in performance mode still looks fantastic and gets the game running mostly at 60 FPS. I say mostly because it does like to chug a little more than I'd like but the world is so well realised I could look past it, and that soundtrack, man, the deep roaring brass and longing strings mixing with the booming epic vocal chorus perfectly captures not only the gigantic scale of your quest, but also the setting. The game makes you want to feel like you're in mythical Midgard and it totally nails it. The violence is there and in absolute spades, and the level of detail is stunning too, with some of my favourite examples being the fact that you can see exactly where you came from at the summit of the Midgard mountain, showing you how far you've come, and the fact that the traps within the core of the mountain were created with ways for the makers to get around the traps without hurting themselves, so created tiny passages perfect for Kratos' son Atreus to fit through, but not big enough for anyone actually strong enough to make it through the mountain itself alone. As for the gameplay, well, I found it good fun for the most part, but I also found it quite clunky, which I'll get into in a bit. Point is though, 70% of the time it was a good time for me. At the centre of it, if you've played any other God of War game then you won't take too long fitting in here, by combining light and heavy attacks for combos and dodging to avoid telegraphed enemy behaviour, and by using a much more effective guard and parry system, it's mostly good stuff. And of course, you can still stun enemies to the point of a grab finisher where you can kill them outright or use their bodies against each other, and yes, nothing is better than grabbing this thing and smashing up everything in your path. And for such a simple addition to the God of War formula, throwing Kratos' new Leviathan axe and having it come straight back with a touch of a button is one of the more satisfying things to do in the whole game. The way you can get it rammed into the body of an enemy and then have it rip through their heads as you call it back to your hand, and just being able to deal with any other small threat from a distance is cool, I can't say much more than that. Plus for a symbol of Kratos' new life and new family, it's a cool little thematic touch. I just like the axe, it's cool. I'm also okay with the new exploration element within the game. Not that other God of Wars had no exploration at all, but with the new light RPG mechanics and much more open design with a central hub branching out to dozens more areas, exploration is more important than ever. And going back to older areas with new abilities, completing new side quests for much better gear and going through every linear branch and solving all the other little puzzles around them gives a sense of progression I can't compare to any other God of War game. And the Lake of Nine, your central hub, gets more and more open with more areas to explore even in the same areas you checked before every time you revisit it. These offer you trickier navigation puzzles and more insane combat encounters to solve that amazingly are totally optional, which doesn't only make backtracked areas not a bore to come back to, but also doesn't make them a breeze and actually reward you with better gear and upgrade materials for the extra sense of worth. As far as the light RPG mechanics go, I'm well, alright with these, I suppose. There's a lot more depth here and things to think about than just going nuts like in other God of War games, and it gives ten times more reason to look around every corner of a level, but it misses the mark for me for how disappointingly unexperimental it actually is, and the potential was left a little in the dirt, if you ask me. You have different level numbers on each bit of equipment, as you'd expect, but by equipping the higher numbers, it doesn't matter what the stats actually are, the higher the number, the higher your overall strength is, which, if you're any more than three levels below an enemy level, can end up killing you out 
outright in one or two hits. And this can fluctuate wildly depending on what you equip, what special stones you infuse to it, and what you decide to level up. So automatically that leaves you a little limited on what to equip and makes more than 80% of the shit you pick up absolutely worthless unless you want to sell it, especially disappointing after a difficult side quest. If you equip something that has even better character stats but a worse number level, just don't bother equipping it, it'll make you overall weaker for no reason. So the options for matching and swapping different sets and equipment is very low, which sucks a bit. It's not a focus of the game though, like I said, it's light, but I still can't help but find it disappointing. If you have a system like this, make it a little bit simpler or a little bit deeper. This middle ground I found very strange. Plus, even if you upgrade the numbered level of a certain bit of equipment so it doesn't make you overall weaker, there's no way to see how good the stats will be in the future levels of the equipment, which is totally understandable, but it's this fucking overall power number that fucks the entire system up. So for me, I couldn't find any other way of seeing what equipment would be best in each situation without fully upgrading their level numbers and then comparing them, leading to a lot of completely wasted supplies after I upgrade a lot into a piece of armour I thought may have been more powerful than what I had but ended up not being. And again, I didn't mind this since combat and exploration is still the focus of the game, but it's still very odd. We'll go more into the other stuff like Atreus later on, but I've neglected the story for a little too long, so here's what I think. <clears throat> it's entertaining, it's well written, but it's nowhere fucking near as deep as it likes to think it is. If you want a deeply emotional game in a similar kind of world that does it better with just one main character to focus on, play Hellblade. God of War 4 is essentially about one thing, a dad and kid trying to respect their dead mother slash wife's wishes on her ashes being placed on the highest peak of the realms, and the tribulations that journey runs into. It ticks all the boxes for an emotional father-son journey, a coming-of-age story, and even has some good themes of what parenthood means for different people, and how someone like a god is able to deal with it. But the game does not at any point go above and beyond like these fucking idiot websites like to say. The setting is cool, the hints linking Kratos and his history to the past games from more than 10 years ago are very cool to see, and I especially love the dynamic between Kratos and Atreus. With this brutal universe and the fact Kratos is the fucking Greek god of war trying to leave his past behind, it's not a typical relationship. It's much more mentor and student than anything with a humorless, stone-cold, aggressive monster at heart trying to be a loving figure. But for such a weird relationship, it feels genuine and very well done, helped along by the voice acting for sure. Hey, that looks like a water wheel. Or I guess, an underwater wheel. Did you just laugh at that? No. You sure? Yes. I do not laugh. And on reflection, it is pretty sad how this relationship only now has the chance to develop and blossom after the mother of the family dies. It also explores the consequences of keeping secrets, but also trying to balance that with letting the true nature of your birth loose on a young mind that can't handle it. But after all of this, if you strip it back, if you want to compare this to something like The Last of Us in terms of dynamic and complex relationships and dialogue in a dangerous world, there is nothing here that deep whatsoever. There's no subtleties in the story, even though it desperately tries to show you them, and I just just saw it as a slightly deeper and more emotional regular God of War, with a really nice twist at the end for sure that I won't spoil here, but needless to say it caps off the idea of a monstrous man trying to steer his son in the right direction absolutely beautifully, because ultimately it turns out to be for nothing, nobody can escape their fate. Weaving motivations, character dynamics for heroes and villains alike, there isn't really any of that here. It is as one track as any other God of War game, and that's fine, but it tries to present itself as something more, and it just isn't. Every other character, no matter how angry or sad they get, is just an accessory to the end of Kratos' quest, and it doesn't go any further than that. It's the same with the Norse gods and such. They're cool characters and fun encounters when you reach them, but they are just roadblocks and nothing more, which they are in the previous games, but it makes all of the story cutscenes in this game redundant because there's so much of it. Except for the cutscenes where, like, Atreus slices Thor's son's throat and moments like that. That's actually part of the development of the story, but most of the time the long cutscenes with the characters add absolutely nothing to anything. And since this game is very obviously taking notes from The Last of Us, even down to the controls, let's just say that those subtleties and conflicts that make an unremarkable zombie story fantastic are not really here. You're mostly doing the same one-track goal from start to end, with well voice acted characters with not much changing aside from the things that keep stopping your progress, and yes, I actually prefer this more subdued and regretful battered Kratos after all the shit he's endured in the previous games. God of War 4 Kratos is my favourite Kratos, but come on guys, let's be real, his emotional range still isn't that wide despite the new voice 
actor, his deliveries and expressions don't really change that much, and that makes all of the slow and drawn out walking sequences not interesting in the slightest, and slows everything down just for the sake of random stories. Even worse than this is the climbing, at least in Uncharted you can be attacked during these parts, or even fall off, here you can't, it's just more walking but going up a wall. Saying that though, I did love the sense of humour in the story though, the dwarf brothers who hate each other and always want to one up the other by hitting your axe with one tap of their hammer was funny as fuck. And I got a laugh from the moment you can deliberately ignore the game's advice it gives you and get a specialised death cutscene that I thought was going somewhere but just ended up killing me. I also thought that Mimir was a fantastic bit of comic relief, not just because he's a head on your ass, but because he's actually pretty damn funny, and going against Kratos' utter lack of emotion makes it all the more enjoyable. Why start with winter? It's from a song Mother used to sing. Oh, I know that one. Winter! Uh... Quiet head. Doesn't like music either. Got it. Well, we had history, I guess you could say. Like, romantic history? Ah, oh, lad, you're making me blush, I think. Can I still blush? What happened, Mimir? They took an uncomfortable number of measurements and then proceeded to bicker about the weather. Where do you want us to take you? How about the warm confines of anywhere bloody else? It will be dangerous. Well, that hasn't stopped you before, eh? Hmm. That's the spirit. The game never lets him get annoying, and since he's also the smartest man alive, he knows tons of interesting Norse lore, which is a nice way of delivering the information instead of just reading text. I also really liked it when gameplay details linked with the story events, like when Kratos finally reveals he's a god to Atreus, making him realise that he's the son of a god, turning him into a cocky, horrible asshole for a brief moment. This isn't just a story situation, but also affects the gameplay by having him start fights on his own, swap his arrow types without you asking, and deliberately not firing arrows in combat when you need him to. And it seems extremely out of character even for a kid, but then once you get to the end of the game, you understand what they were doing with it. I won't say anything more than that. I've got to say just for a brief interlude though, I think it's important to remember that any criticisms I have of this game I have mentioned or will mention coming up are because I'm not only judging it as a 2018 action adventure game, but also against the other games of its series. This is pretty much God of War 4. It's a follow up to all the other ones. The story and everything follows on. Soft reboot or not, it's still within the continuity of what's been going on in the past. So if the original games did similar things to what I'm about to complain about or have complained about, you need to remember that I'm talking about God of War 4 as a game of its time. And I'm not going to be bitching about differences just because they're different. That's pathetic. Believe it or not, even though Fallout 1 is one of my favourite games of all time, I enjoy Fallout 4 for totally different reasons. And the same goes for Abe's Odyssey and New and Tasty and even Resident Evil 4 compared to 1, 2 and 3. Difference isn't something you can randomly criticise. And I think it's important to remind everyone that before carrying on and the only reason I'm doing this is because I just don't understand why this game has had tens out of tens flawless scores everywhere so anyway let's carry on as far as the third person perspective goes I didn't mind it. I didn't love it at all and I do have problems with it, but I was okay with it. There were some nice fixes implemented into it for the sake of the new view, like Atreus shouting where dangers are coming from, the warning arrows around Kratos, and even the quick turn button, but still, if you're going to compare the other God of War games to this, there is no comparison. For as fun as this game can be, it just is automatically more cumbersome and restrictive being like this, you can't argue against that. If the camera were a little bit further back and movement wasn't locked to your facing forward position, like in Witcher 3 or Dark, Dark Souls, I wouldn't have an issue, but the times that you end up ganged into a corner being killed from things you're unable to see or feasibly react to, or those times that you rush for a vital health pickup mid-fight and end up totally murdered by shit that again you can't see, is numerous and made me a bit bitter. Why you can't influence your own direction with the analog stick while the camera points somewhere else is baffling to me when games like Dark Souls, and even stuff like Bayonetta and God of War itself have proven it's the quintessential way to do it. And they could have just had Kratos fixed in a front strafing position when he's in aiming mode or something. I mean, god, that's what Uncharted does, and yeah, Uncharted also lets you jump at will, making platforming puzzles just that little bit more interesting. Here though, every jump is a context-sensitive action, taking the chance for aerial combos and jump dodges completely away, and yes, I'm comparing it to the old games before, so why was this taken away and made more mindless? Obviously this is the same kind of control style as The Last of Us, and yes, I love The Last of Us even though it did this, but again, the dialogue and development needed these scenes, and use this control style effectively within the gameplay, 
it's not a hack and slash action adventure game, and any contextual actions needed to be nice and simple to keep the drive of the character interactions alive, and it's a realistic survival story with cannibals and paedophiles in it. Of course the ability to jump like Nathan Drake and climb around like an idiot would be fucking stupid and ruin it. Here though, you're an angry magic man with a boomerang axe cutting down the jaws of trolls and ogres. Let me fucking jump, please. The other problem with facing where the camera's pointing all the time is that you can only sprint in the front angles of Kratos, so you can't sprint around threats, you can't sprint around arenas, you have to be able to point the camera forward wherever you want to sprint, so you can never see all of the action at once. Even if you're fighting against one enemy, if you want to sprint around it, you're going to need to unlock the camera, point it somewhere else, then sprint to there, and then lock them back on, instead of just being able to sprint away while still looking at the enemy. The gameplay itself, though, as opposed to the original games, which I actually quite liked in this case, is less about combo stacking and more about figuring out the most effective ways to knock all enemy health down nice and fast before you get ganged. It's a game about multitasking, and that's pretty cool, and honestly, a combo meter wouldn't help, I don't think, in this game, because with the XP points and the armor and everything, I don't think you can get away with a Bayonetta-styled perform better and get better combos and do things quicker for more rewards kind of system. The game isn't built like that, and that's absolutely fine with me. Once you get the hang of magic, stun grabs, and using Atreus arrows really fast, especially in the air juggle combos, everything flows a lot better, but these kinds of things don't become available until hours into the game. And I don't mean in a kind of start from weak and get stronger sense of progression, I mean it just takes a bit too long to reach this point of fluidity if you ask me. With the more openness of the game though, I did genuinely like the fun optional quests and how they could be quite the spectacle. Saving the chained up dragons was a great time, as were raiding all of the forgotten old storehouses for rare items that have entirely new cutscenes and visuals, and I really like the treasure maps that don't give you any compass pointers to find them but rely on you solving a riddle with nothing but a vague picture to help you. I love shit like this. And yeah, it's not gigantic RPG levels of deep, but that's fine, it's nice and light. Just don't expect any other actual side stories like in Witcher 3. This is all for the gear in order for you to reach your singular goal, and that is it. Even Kratos himself reminds you of this throughout the game. Atreus himself within the game, I also found a pretty cool dude. He's a tough as nails little kid and one of the better written kid characters of his age out there. Throughout the game, he gets different arrow types for his bow for combat and puzzles alike, and because of that, he's much more than just a random NPC that follows you around or an escort you need to protect. He's an extension to Kratos' abilities, and all his moves only require the use of a couple of buttons, making him a fantastic and simple to use ally. Once he's also been upgraded to scavenge health for you and physically fight enemies and stun them, the whole game picks up a lot as well. This though leads on to my biggest issue with God of War 4 though, the way that the game does pick up. In my opinion, for the first beginning hours, it's way too fucking slow. Not just because of the abundance of walking that doesn't add anything and slows everything right down, I mean even though the original games were able to provide insane action and moments of safety and cooldown just fine but whatever, this game with its stupid fucking website bullshit backing it up and the developer interviews about the story makes it all clear. This is trying to be an emotional quest. And here this game is trying so desperately to be God of the Last of Us it's painful, which is especially clear in these walking parts with lots of dialogue. In some places it works, but mostly it just provides nonsense. My favourite example being in this part where you go to get some magic light from Alfheim, and Kratos goes into the light and gets lost for about two minutes. While we're in there, we find out that Atreus favoured his mum over his dad, which is fucking obvious from the beginning of the game. Then, Kratos comes back, realises he's actually been gone for hours and missed out on a gory epic battle I would have loved to have done myself, but whatever, then gets yelled at for about 20 seconds from Atreus for abandoning him and saying that we've never been there for him, which is a good moment, but then this immediately follows up a few seconds later with the gameplay and conversations returning to absolutely normal and Atreus acting like nothing fucking happened. Come on, please? Seriously? And this kind of thing is particularly noticeable in the first few hours of the game where the gameplay still has yet to pick up, and in an already huge game that will last you a good 30 hours or so if you do a load of side quests, the first 6 hours or so for me were so fucking slow compared to the rest of it. Even the gore and violence God of War is famous for wasn't as intense as it is in the later hours of the game, and that's fine, again, but it's still much slower in comparison to the proper drive the rest of the game has once you decapitate Mimir. This isn't helped by the first five bosses I face being exact carbon copies of the same two encounters, and then the first major change in boss being in Alfheim, which is just a more powerful version of every other enemy you fought in that area. After that, this was then followed by another two or three fucking bosses of the same first boss enemies, and let me just say, this fucking stone-wielding ogre fuckhead was overdone to the point of embarrassing. No joke, I think you fight this boss with different elemental attacks about nine fucking times, and if they were 
were treated like regular enemies, I wouldn't mind too much, but they aren't. They are presented, directed, and are placed as bosses where any other monster from the huge collection of Norse monsters could have been used, but aren't. The bosses quickly lost all sense of impact, importance, and scale that the original games did so beautifully, and I ended up not being excited for any bosses that could have appeared, aside from the Valkyries, which were fantastic fights, but even then the Valkyries are all the same in their design, more or less. There are other highlights as well, like the dragon fight. This bit was brilliant, and the final fight with Boulder, that was also brilliant. But the dragon doesn't appear for around six or seven fucking hours, and the final Boulder fight is at the end of the game. I mean, I will admit the bosses themselves are well-designed encounters enough and work well around the new camera angle. They all have different methods of fighting them as well, instead of just smacking and dodging like the old games. But if people love to give shit to Dark Souls 1 for using the Asylum Demon three different times with different elemental abilities, even though that's a cool fucking monster in design and the fights are surprises and space out enough, why people aren't getting pissed off at the utter lack of interesting bosses out of the entire Norse catalogue mystifies me. It's also worth saying that not only does the game itself pick up in pace a good few hours in, but you also get more realms to explore entirely dedicated to the fun combat system and rewards you plentifully for the privilege. This stuff is great, but again, it doesn't happen until hours and hours into the game. So basically what I'm saying is that for an up to 30-ish hours game, the beginning handful of hours I did not enjoy that much, and that is a huge chunk of this game that I can't simply ignore. And this isn't like a build up for a payoff that's worth it. Once the game picks up, that's when you feel like it's starting to build up. And once you reach that part of the game where the Blades of Chaos come back into Kratos' life, that's when it not only gets depressing that Kratos will never fucking escape who he is, but also gets really fucking good and is a brilliant callback to the past games that I found worth it for reaching that point. It just takes way too long to get there if you ask me. Oh, and going back to the boss situation one more time, what do you do in other God of War games? Kill huge mythical creatures that get in your way. The game is called God of War. All of the bosses are epic and memorable and all different in design and execution for the most part. And once you reach the end of these games, what happens? You fight Ares as the size of a fucking skyscraper. You fight your own dad, Zeus. Fucking Zeus. The entire series is built around making bigger and badder encounters that build up in scale and anticipation and threat until you reach an ultimate end that has been so well built up it not only feels good, but I mean, look, you're fighting a fucking god. In God of War 4 though, not only are you stuck fighting these copy-paste bosses, but throughout the whole game you're warned about Odin and you're warned about Thor, about the biggest, baddest, bastard gods that everyone has heard of and nobody likes, and you're expecting them to be final encounters. I mean, fucking hell, you even kill both of Thor's sons and even the son of Freya, Balder. And the wrath of Thor is warned to you constantly for what you've done. How evil Odin is is alluded to you constantly. And even Freya tells you she'll get her revenge and leave you in a puddle of blood directly to you. So I don't think I was being unreasonable waiting for an incredible ending set piece to cap off everything as Kratos has angered more gods that he must defeat to protect his son, but once you reach the end, scatter your mother's ashes, do any side quest that you want and then go back to bed only to see fucking Thor standing at your doorstep, the game then fucking stops. And seriously, fuck you God of War for doing that. Fuck you. You did not earn a fucking cliffhanger. This was built up through the entire fucking game for 20 plus hours and you fucking end it there. I mean, Baldur was a fantastic fight, I'm not denying that, but come the fuck on, you can't stop it there when so much of the game and bosses were so disappointing in the first place. There's obviously a fucking sequel being made. This is smugness I haven't seen in a game for years from a team that knows this game will sell millions of copies. And since I'm a sucker for Kratos and God of War, yeah, I'll get it. Not only to continue what should have been the ending, but to see more of the obvious effort gone into this game thrown into more variety of Norse beasts and actual gods and an actual better sense of progression. If the original 2005 game could do this perfectly well on the PS2, I can't see why this cutting edge PS4 title ended fucking there, especially after so much time reaching that point. Okay, so rant over about that. It sounds like overall I hate this game, but I don't. Far from it. I liked God of War 4, but that's as far as it goes for me. In my opinion, going in as blind and as low expectations as possible God of War 4 is a big ass disappointment. It's a well crafted fantasy action adventure game with an extremely badass protagonist, an entertaining father son quest with decent mystery, a lot of bang for your buck and tons of things to do, immense production values, and for the most part, very fun and brutal gameplay. But way too many fucking niggles, utterly baffling decisions, and slow, slow moments stop me from calling it one of the best God of War games, let alone one of the best games of all time, period. Sorry guys, I don't understand what you mean. It's still good, it engaged me to the point of not realising how long I was on it for, it's satisfying and challenging even on normal difficulty, but this is not a fucking masterpiece if you ask me guys, and if you think so, that's great! Personally, after I finished this game, I wanted to go straight back to God of War 1, 2 and 3 and play through all of them again after the sour taste in my mouth, and I've already re played 1, 2 and 3 about 3 times each. Do I ever want to go back to God of War 4 though? Well, 
No, I don't. I'm done with it. So I'm just hoping in vain at this point that the sequel is gonna be tons better. I'm gonna give this game a 6 out of 10. It's alright. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Aye, 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 subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video on God of War 4, everyone. I hope I didn't piss anyone off too much, but again, like I said, I like the game. I just don't think it's a 10 whatsoever. If you think so, that's great. It's a big game. Hope you get a lot out of it. But regardless, special thanks to all the names on screen right now that have helped support this channel through Patreon, and special, special thanks to the top tier supporters on the site. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Chumba Wumba, that's great, <laughs> Cyberpunk Symphony, Star Ira Lance J, Sakari, Binary Code, Tanner Craft, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, AD Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.